been Kevin that's been, that's been directing. So I don't know any different. And it's been changing a lot because Kevin's been trying to put different twists on it. You know, like different locations, not necessarily theater settings. So, I heard it was. I mean, from what I can tell, in the last couple of years, it feels like it's maybe getting a little bit smaller. And the attendance is in it. Yeah. Hello? Oh, God. Good afternoon, everybody. Every year, it's the same person. Oh, thank you. I mean, I look at the picture. We've got uh, kind of a, an open mic. Uh, forum today. Um, and just to give you a little bit of an idea before we get into our general announcements of what this is about, essentially um, in the past few years we've had uh, you guys share uh, information with us, uh, links, publications, groups, um, theater companies, anything like that, um, that that you had success or love with and uh, um, yeah and then we can just kind of jot them down as you need them but also this is uh, still going on HowlRound, so you'd be able to check in their archives if there's anything that you missed and uh, go back through and, and uh, take it that way. But uh, if you do have uh, you know, uh, uh, no paper, you might want to take it out and listen. Um, so yeah, so think about that uh, for a little bit and let that stew, and then we've got a few more announcements, and then we'll call you guys up. We'll uh, have uh, just, it's open mic, and we'll just form a line up this way here, and then, just say your piece and then have a seat and then we'll continue on. But uh, here's Kevin with some other stuff. Um, well, uh, welcome to Friday, you guys. It's going really fast, I can't believe it. Um, uh, I, I wanted to talk just a little bit. We're gonna send out a uh, survey right, at, right after the conference is over. It's an email survey. It doesn't take too long to, to fill out, but it's immensely helpful for us to get feedback on. There's a, a questions about a number of different areas of the conference that it helps us adjust things. We've taken it every year. We've been able to change the conference and make it better, make it stronger on how we do it. We always get great ideas from you. So we really appreciate it if you can fill that out and send it back. And, um, and it's always helpful to you. There's a place in the survey, but if you, uh, Whatever experience you've had, if you if you feel strongly about it, one way or the other, if you can send an email about that, um, we we are able to use a lot of those emails to help generate more interest and support from the Omaha community and the people who fund this, and it's and it's been very very effective for them to hear from you about how this week may have affected your work, your lives, et cetera. So that's, that's a huge favor if you have the time and energy to afterwards. That, that would be great. Oh, no, I don't. But I can, you want to grab one? I, I might be on there. Um, speaking of surveys, um, in front of you guys on the tables, there is one that is kind of necessary for us. Uh, it's from the... Uh, Humanities Nebraska wants to know uh, your reaction to this program so we can continue to provide high quality offerings and they actually re require this uh, specific feedback from you guys. So there's some pencils there. So just as people are, are giving their spiel up here, you can just fill that out and uh, just leave it on the table and we'll come around and uh, collect those. Um, yeah, then there's some information on the bottom you can fill out. So um, a couple of other things, just general announcements. Uh, we're starting to get some stuff in for the play slam. Uh, a couple of things about that too is just keep in mind the, the shorter the pieces, the more people are involved. And if there are uh, duplicates, if you guys put in two things, we're just going to do one, just for fairness and for time, so everybody gets a voice. So if you put two things in there, um, I'll just do the first one that, that you put in. Um, but again, you know, keep them. You know, e even ten minutes can take a lot of time away from people. So you know, even like five, five pages is, is probably ideal for that type of thing. Uh, let me see, also, uh, let's see, uh, Andrea wanted to talk a little bit about tonight's event here. She's got sh schmaltz all over her, I can tell. So don't shake my hand. All right, here's Andrea, everybody. So there have been a couple questions 
questions about the fringe tonight, so this is a little description and also a formal invitation to please come to the fringe tonight. Um, it will be a conglomeration of performances by various people who have attended the conference over past years, as well as uh, local companies, actors, people. It will be all over the campus. It will wander, you will hike, you will see lots of awesome sort of crazy things. They, you might love them, you might hate them, but they will all be short enough to like move past as soon as, as, soon as they're done. And um, it's gonna bring the house down, so you should come. Um, thank you, Denise. And I feel like there was something more I should tell, but if you have questions, ask, but it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be loose, it's fly by the seat of your pants, it's been pulled together um, sort of long distance a couple months ago, but really most of it has happened this week, so uh, just, come with a spirit of fun. Where should people start? Um, you should start down, probably downstairs outside this building. That's where the bus will bring you um, if you're coming on the bus, and then everyone else should kind of gather there, and it will be made apparent where to go from there. But can I also say my one thing, my open mic thing really quickly? Yeah. Because, okay, a really my new favorite website, and some of you probably know this is Capsule, K-A-P-S-U-L. And it's a really awesome way to work with collaborators long distance and to share um, photos and videos and text and all sorts of things so that if you're just looking for visual um, and reference material that you can all put in one place, you can create these capsules. And it's awesome, and I love it. And so check it out, K-A-P-S-U-L dot org, I think. Okay, great. Um, Let's see, uh, one more thing that uh, I missed just general uh, announcement wise. Uh, the departure schedules and drivers um, are available uh, downstairs at the registration desk. Um, so if you need to be reminded or, or find that out at all, um, it's down there. Uh, let me see. Uh, and then, yeah, I think that's it for uh, general um, announcements. I've got a couple of things just to point out too. You might have noticed downstairs uh, there were some scripts. Um, uh, Jason Aaron Goldberg, who was here last year, uh, does uh, some micro-publishing under Original Works. Um, and do you know what website they were promoting? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's on Facebook, Original Works Publishing. And okay. Original Works Online. Yeah, Original Works Publishing. Um, yeah, it's online. And then also, uh, there's a, a flyer down there, too, uh, for uh, a local theater, the Shelter Belt. They do uh, original work. Um, there's a couple of uh, vignette shows that they do each year. Uh, always looking for good 10-minute uh, plays. One about Halloween, Shelter Skelter, is uh, the name of that one. And that's been a tradition in town for a long time. And then they also do kind of a, a pseudo uh, love story uh, from Shelter Belt of Love. Um, originally, it was kind of more romantic stories. But they've broken that into just you know general heartwarming pieces, basically. Um, and that is uh, shelterbelt.org. And uh, again, there's a flyer um, downstairs as well with some more specific information you guys can take. So we can start um, just lining up. Um, there's no hands are necessary. So if anybody has uh, some goodness to share, come on down. Um, I, I should say um, I should say that uh, uh, Original Works Publishing has actually published uh, a number of playwrights uh, that, that they found here at the conference when Jason was here at the conference, and a number of playwrights who were here before he got here that he just found. And we we have a couple of those publications down on the table below, but he's he's constantly looking for new uh, playwrights to publish whose works fit within what he's trying to do. Um, every day, every Monday, I think he does Free Play Monday, which you can go on and, and get a hold of a script, a free script from him, something that he's work on so it's he's very active vibrant guy uh, trying to get this independent publishing for playwrights going so, it's, so that's a great resource um, one thing I guess if you want to we'll try and keep moving quickly so everybody can get uh, resources in if you have something you want to kind of just form a, a line you know when when it goes down to two or three people the next person can come up and just hang out so that you're ready to get right back up to the mic with with the next person. And I'm not even sure, Aaron, are we howl rounding? We are. Okay. Um, welcome, national audience, then. And 
Um, so, David, are you, you? I do. You've got one. All right. Come this is very good. Cool. Um, <clears throat> this is just a. How many drummers guild members do we have here? Raise your hand. Just a, okay, just a few. Okay. Well, uh, the Drama Guild is having its second national conference, August 22nd to 25th in Chicago. If you're not a member of the guild, you should join the guild. I'm the Missouri field representative. Hello. Missouri. And at the at this year's conference uh, in Chicago, August 22nd, you can ask me more about it, and I can give you more information. Uh, there, the following famous artists are invited. Gretchen Cryer, Rebecca Gilman, they're invited and they're coming. Gretchen Cryer, Rebecca Gilman, David Ives, Lisa Cron, uh, Martha Levy, Terrence McNally, Marsha Norman, Teresa Rebeck, Stephen Schwartz, Jeff Sweet, John Wyman, George C. Wolf, and many, many, many others. So if you're not a member of the Guild, come join us. It's, it's a really exuberant uh, experience, and uh, if you want more information about that, I'd be happy to share it. I'm David Crespi. And my email is crispyd at missouri.edu. So. And David, I think the price goes up tomorrow, doesn't it? At, at, and yes, it does. The price goes up very soon. Who said that? Where are you? There you are. I think it goes up tomorrow. It goes up tomorrow <laughs> for the conference. So. Join today. Join today. <laughs> <laughs> Join your guild. It's out fighting for you. And it's also, it is going to be the only place where you'll get a major uh, resource directory that the uh, the drama source book is going to be stopping soon, and yes, and the Dramatist Guild's uh, playwright resource guide will be the only current guide, and it will be updated constantly, and it'll be available online. It's it's the artist resource guide. So if you're not a member of the guild, now's the time to join. Okay, all right, I get it. Um, I have a list of four things. Um, <clears throat> we're talking about uh, small publishing. I also wanted to mention a really great uh, small uh, uh, performance text publishing company called 53rd State. I think they've now been um, uh, subsumed by TCG, which actually makes it easier. Um, it was just two women running it, and so it would take a while for you to get the plays. But, they publish a lot of performance texts that might not be published otherwise um, because of, of being problematic in different ways. Uh, and it's 53rd, it's 53rd, 53rd state.org. Um, and I don't know about uh, whether they're taking submissions or, or how, that's, how that's working yet at this point, but, um, but if you want to read some, some new sort of non-traditional work, that's a, that's a great place to find. Great place to find it. They publish some of my plays, and also Eric Ends and uh, Miguel Gutierrez, who's who's a, a really great choreographer who uses text in uh, non-traditional ways. And Erin Courtney and um, Corinne Keithley is the she uh, started it out um, just uh, self-publishing, like on Lulu.com, which is another really great resource. Uh, if you want to self-publish, it's really easy and inexpensive to do that now. So, and the other one, there's uh, three more. Uh, McDowell Colony, everybody please apply to the McDowell Colony. Um, it's, uh, they, they also have started, I think they're starting a new thing for devised theater. Um, so if you're interested in devised theater or you make devised theater, um, it's a wonderful artist retreat um, for all the different um, artistic disciplines in uh, Peterborough, New Hampshire. And, uh, it's because of the way their funding works, it's, it's easiest to get in for the first time. So um, you may not, even if you feel like, oh, I'm not qualified, you should still apply because you're actually very likely to get in the first time. And you get artist retreats that last anywhere from a week to eight weeks, and you choose how long you want to be there. And you get your own uh, studio that's in the woods, and no one is allowed to disturb you unless you invite them to. Um, and somebody, the, the, the meals are prepared for you. Um, you eat breakfast and dinner in a, like a common area. But then during the day, uh, a little elf brings you an actual picnic basket from the Peterborough Basket Company filled with, with your lunch in it. And they leave it on your doorstep and run away. And uh, you just go out and get it whenever you feel like it. Nobody bothers you. And you actually get an enormous amount of work done there. And it's, uh, it's a great experience if you feel like you want to uh, re 
reestablish the work that you do as being at the center of your life. Sort of, because I always call it, I need to re mcdowellize I need to put what I'm doing at the center um, instead of at the edge where it gets pushed to sometimes. And the other one is, um, there's two other ones, and I, I consider them to be sister organizations. One is in New York and one is in Minneapolis. Uh, in New York is uh, the, the New Dramatists. Um, and in Minneapolis is the Playwright Center. They are uh, organizations that support playwrights um, and that don't ask really anything in return. Um, the Playwright Center has all different ways to be involved. Um, they have a core writers group. They have different um, fellowships, commissions, residencies there. Um, and all, it's uh, uh, playwrightcenter.org, I think is the website. It's either that or pwc.org. It's probably playwrightcenter.org. Um, anyway, you could Google it and find it, and, uh, and you could just see the different grants and, and, and all that kind of stuff that they have on there. They're also connected with the Jerome Foundation in a number of ways, um, and they're very, very supportive, and it's, uh, it's in a church, an old church in, um, in Minneapolis, as is New Dramatists. It's also in an old church in New York City, and they have residencies that are seven years long, um, their application process is very competitive, but it's now all online. You used to have to do all this printing out of scripts and making this package and everything had to be bound in a certain way. And it was a total nightmare, but it's actually a lot easier to apply now. It also means that there's a lot of people applying, but um, it took me 10 years to get in, but man, once I did, everything changed really quickly. So I just made it my business, a habit to apply. I think the deadline is September 15th every year. Um, and everyone should be applying every year. And I, um, I finally got in three years ago, and uh, and I'm able to see who's applying. Um, so I want to see all your names on the list this year on September 15th. I'm going to hunt you down uh, because it's it's really the greatest thing that could happen to a playwright. Absolutely, seven years yeah. of um, total 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 support. <laughs> You know, I didn't even think <clears throat> to say, we've been saying all week that um, we're doing the national broadcasts in uh, partnership with HowlRound TV. Just in case anybody doesn't know, HowlRound is an incredible platform for uh, the theater community in, in this country. There's amazing writing going on. It's, it's kind of a, a somewhat open portal. Anybody can send in uh, uh, essays, uh, thoughts about things that are, are really affecting them in their work in theater in the country, and it's curated um, from uh, uh, the staff there, so it's not a guarantee that your writing's necessarily going to get them, but a lot, every, every day there's at least one new piece of writing up there, and I've read some really beautiful, progressive, uh, very insightful um, Essays there, and so I see some people shaking their heads, and so it's that's a, a just a great, great organization. Their their work is really wonderful. If you go to HowlRound TV, their um, VJ has got he's documenting things from across the country, conversations, and they're all archived, so you can listen to them at your leisure. Um, so uh, excellent, excellent group to check out. I you can sign up to just get their daily email, so you can see what the what the writing is of the day, and, and really quickly, you know, kind of see if you if it's a topic that you want to go into or not. So anyway, all around. This is a resource for uh, women writers. Uh, it's called Hedgebrook Writers Retreat. It's on Woodby Island um, in Washington, and uh, their motto really is uh, it's all about supporting women offering change. And so they are like the McDowell um, colony. They give you time and space, and it's up to you. You know how long? I think they you can go up to eight weeks, I think. And they too, they have amazing chefs who cook you incredible food and support you. And you come together for dinner every night. And the last time I was there, like Gloria Steinem was in residence, so having dinner, you don't know who the who the invited guest is going to be. They're always in for them. They don't teach or do anything. They're just there being writers. But you get share time and space with uh, all kinds of interesting humans. And um, uh, yeah, 
apply to them, they're good, hedgebrook.org, H-E-D-G-E-B-R-O-O-K.org. So I have, I have four um, from the San Francisco area, so there are a couple organizations, two, there are a couple theaters that I work with a lot. Um, the first one is Cutting Ball Theater, and um, annually they have a new play, um, new play festival. It's called Risk Is This. So go online to cuttingball.com and you can find, you can learn about the theater, what they do. They do, they do um, experimental work and we envision classics. Uh, so they have a regular season, but they also have um, uh, Risk Is This Festival. David Jacoby, you, you're gonna, you have a play in the next season, Risk Is This. Um, the second organization I work with a lot is uh, the Bay Area Playwrights Foundation. Uh, you can find them at playwrightsfoundation.org. And um, they, one of the things they do is they host um, an annual, uh, the Bay Area Playwrights Festival, which is um, similar, well, it's different, but it's again, a new play development organization. And uh, the people there are very accessible and just call them up or email them. That would be um, Amy Mueller. Um, and there, it's a, it's a two week long development lab. It's a great way to meet um, people from all over the nation as we're doing here to meet um, new directors, new actors, you know, playwrights. Uh, let's see, the third one is, um, uh, there are two res artist residency programs in the Bay Area. One is the Jurassic Foundation, D-J-E-R-A-S-S-I. And uh, just Google Jurassic and you'll find out. I, I, don't, I think that's not the official name. There's a longer name, but it is Jurassic Foundation, supported by Carl Jurassic and, and you know, his peer donors. Um, <clears throat> and that is, uh, I think you can stay anywhere from, uh, I think maybe it's a monthly residency, but it's again, like McDowell, like Hedgebrook, it's um, everything, you stay there, you, all your meals are provided, it's beautiful. And, <clears throat> Excuse me. In that um, in that uh, residency program, there are all kinds of artists there. There are sculptors, there are visual artists, there are dancers, there are filmmakers, composers, writers, novelists, all different kinds. And then there's also the um, it's called the Headland Center for the Arts, which is in Marin County, so across the Golden Gate Bridge. Really beautiful. You can Google them and find out about their residency programs. And that's Headland H E A D L A N D S Center for the Arts. This, this is for the teachers out here, uh, especially teachers of undergrad. Um, I'm at UCSD on uh, a graduate program, and every year we have uh, the Wagner New Play Festival where we do um, full productions of, of the MFA's work. But um, one, it's, it's, it's about 10 days, but one of those days um, we take time to dedicate uh, one reading to an undergraduate student uh, from anywhere in the country. Uh, who has written a play on the African American experience? It's called the, uh, the Floyd Gaffney Playwriting Competition. Um, and this year, um, I mean, we, we happily had a winner, but um, we didn't have a lot of applications. Um, so I guess we'd like to get the word out there. Um, uh, it, you get $1,000, you get flown in, uh, and the Wagner Festival. Uh, we have a lot of uh, literary managers, agents, uh, and directors from around the country that we invite as guests. Um, so these undergraduates, um, very early on in, 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 in their writing stage, are, can have a really great reading and then have a discussion and have uh, meals uh, with a lot of uh, prominent artists. Um, uh, so it takes place in April and they're flown to San Diego. Um, it's a really great experience. Once again, it's called the um, Dr. Floyd Gaffney Playwriting Competition and uh, more people will definitely Um, one of them is called the Playwright Binge, which I, some of you may have heard several of us talking about. I know Crystal from there. I found out that Kyle is on. Are there any? Is there anybody else on the Playwright Binge? Oh, okay. Um, so the Playwright Binge is a Yahoo group. Um, it's a, there are two challenges. Uh, it's a resource sharing, but also there are two challenges each year during March and in September. 
to do script submissions, um, one a day for the entire month. Um, and everybody sort of reports in as they're doing it and sort of eggs each other on. Um, and it's an amazing way to get in a lot of script submissions. Um, and so you also, and then throughout the year, people also sort of post other opportunities that happen or inform you of places that might not be so great. Um, and also report in about any successes they might have had from the Playwright Binge. So you can just go to Yahoo and search the Yahoo groups for Playwright Binge. Um, the other one, I'm actually a board member of the International Center for Women Playwrights, and that is at womenplaywrights.org. Um, it is not just for women, but it does support women playwrights. Um, they have a listserv that is uh, very, very active and very supportive. Um, it, you know, gives advice and it um, has very sometimes heated conversations, um, but also it just generally, you know, any time that you have um, a production happening in one city, it is very possible that somebody might host you or might uh, do a meetup so that you can meet other people who are in the city. Um, so it's a very, very supportive group. We also, I am the co-chair of a new award through that organization. Um, called the 5050 Applause Awards, which uh, highlights theater companies throughout the entire world that uh, have have produced women playwrights in at least 50% of a given season. We actually just closed the nominations for that right before I left, which is rather challenging. Um, but we're going to be sort of going through the process and announcing recipients in September. Um, and then we'll have hopefully another one next year. But it, uh, the research part was very interesting. And so uh, if you do happen to know of theater companies that uh, did that for this past year, and I should note that theater companies that are particularly dedicated to women's work uh, are not uh, eligible. But if you do know of theater companies that have produced women playwrights, um, in more than 50% of their season, this past one was 2012 to 2013. Um, you can feel free to email me, only ICWP members are able to nominate, um, but I'm happy to start putting people on a list for next year. Great, it looks like there's a ton that's going on out there. Um, uh, let's see, continuing the theme, um, Magdalena for Women in the Arts. It's a, it's a collective that's woman-centric. Um, it's based in Europe, but it's really global. They include writing, but also performance, directing. Um, they have a, 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 they're footed strongly in the Odin uh, Theater Project in, in Denmark, which is a Brichtovskian uh, and kind of anti-text, but, but uh, brilliant uh, anthropologically. Um, Magdalena from Women in the Arts. Um, uh, the MAP Fund, which you must all know about, it's one of the, the finest large sources of funding for new new work that's out there, and their deadlines are generally in September. Uh, uh, La Mama Umbria, it, it's, uh, they uh, have a directing and acting and a playwriting workshop that they conduct every summer. I'm, I'm heading up the, the one this summer. You have to pay to get yourself over there. It's, it's, it ain't free, but... Um, it, it's nice that food is incredible. Um, uh, and Pataphysics is, is a, an organization that Mac and I have both worked in, and, and uh, they run a fantastic series of workshops. They're, they're, they, uh, I think they're still under the umbrella of um, uh, the Flea Theater in New York. Uh, and lastly, if, uh, again, if you're on, on the West Coast, in the Bay, she's based in the Bay Area, but she really gets around. If you want a really kind of vitalizing life practice and writing workshop, check out Sharon Bridgeforth, and she has a, a workshop she calls the River Sea Workshop. Um, and she has her own website, Bridgeforth, uh, with no E, B-R-I-D-G-F-O-R-T-H. Uh, a teacher I'd recommend to you. Great, uh, Mark Costello is gonna talk about the shared drive. Um, <laughs> Seriously though, the sign-up sheet is downstairs. We can be a resource for one another. Um, anybody who puts plays up, I know I'm personally gonna try and respond to as many as possible. I'm a new play dramaturg, so I enjoy doing that sort of work. So 
sign up for it. I'll put you in the share drive. We can share work together so we can start being a group resource. Mm -hmm. Thank you, <clears throat> I wanted to mention um, one resource that's a little bit tangential for playwright, or a little com comes to playwrights in a sort of a, from an oblique angle, but um, it's called the Edgerton Foundation for New American Plays. And um, they're sort of a secret society. I don't think they have a website, but um, they, if you Google Edgerton, E-D-G-E-R-T-O-N Foundation, you'll see a lot of references. They work closely with TCG and a lot of, and the way it works is kind of strange. They, they give, grants to theaters that are doing world premieres of new plays. So if you have a play that's getting produced and your theater doesn't know about this, you, uh, the, the foundation basically is there to supply at least one ex full extra week of rehearsal for the play with the full artistic company, including the writer. So just um, it's a kind of a weird, thing for writers, it can be argued why the money isn't going directly to the writers, but that's the way they want to do it, and, um, and it is based on um, the theater submitting the plays, so, and they're, and they're chosen on a blind reading, so, Edgerton. Thank you. Hello, my name is Doug Patterson, I teach theater at UNO, and I haven't been able to attend a lot of the conference because of a lot of other commitments. But uh, I am directing the piece that follows next of Kelly Smith's Empire of the Eternal Void. And hope some of you can stay around to, to, to see it. There's a wonderful conference that started here in Omaha about 20 years ago called Pedagogy and Theater of the Oppressed. It's, um, it's based on the, on the educational theories of Paulo Freire, a Brazilian, the Gusto Boal, the Theater of the Oppressed, a Brazilian. The basic premise that they followed, which I'm really simplifying, but I think it works very well, is that the best relationship of human beings to each other is in dialogue that theater sort of word, in dialogue. And there's an assumption of equality on all sides, that, that we are basically human beings in dialogue, working to create the future together. And if this is our best relationship, the worst is monologue, when one side is in charge. So Freire's approach to education is to engage young people and all learners in dialogue rather than monologue. And Boal's approach is to engage the audience in real, genuine dialogue. The Pedagogy and Theater of the Press Conference uh, began about 20 years ago. The 19th conference will be anybody who's in the South um, uh, I, um, uh, Ohio area will be at a uh, university called Miami University at Oxford, Ohio at the end of June, the last part of June. It goes to the 27th to the 29th, and if anybody's in that area would like to go to it, <clears throat> stop on by, it's a great event. And then next year, the 20th uh, conference will be back here in Omaha. We've had seven here before. Uh, where we started, and it'll be, uh, uh, UNO is building the first community engagement center in the United States to link up the university and the community in very concrete ways, and that building will be opening uh, around May of 2014, and the conference, the PTO conference, will be the first event in that building. So if people are from out of town, think about coming back, or staying around for like a, a, another month, um, yeah. <laughs> or um, uh, uh, people here in Omaha might want to uh, just think about uh, uh, you know, go, going to that conference as well as to this one. Now, thanks very much. It's, it's all been very exciting here. Kevin, you're on. Just wanted to let you know that uh, the Ingram New Works Lab at the Tennessee Rep is now taking applications. Uh, Every year they bring in four playwrights in residence, and uh, the play you'll see here in just a few minutes actually was developed there in 2011-12. Uh, uh, they uh, typically work uh, for about nine months. The only requirement is that you uh, actually have to be uh, in Nashville for a, a monthly meeting. So if you're able to make that trip, it's certainly worth your while. Every January you're there for a week intensive with their visiting fellow. That's uh, been Ranging from this year was Teresa Rebeck, uh, they've had David Oliver, John Patrick Shanley, um, uh, Stephen Dietz, and others along those lines. So uh, obviously I found it a very worthwhile program, so it's worth a look. You can go to TennesseeRep.org 
and uh, take a look at it and uh, hope you guys apply. So, hey, my name's Jack, for those of you who haven't met yet. Um, I'm in New York, and I work with a small off-off-Broadway theater company called Nylon Fusion Collective a lot. Um, they just did a play of mine in March. Um, and every few months, they do a 10-minute play festival that's usually centered thematically around whatever random holiday is that month. So, like, they do it for 4th of July, they do it for Halloween, they do one for Valentine's Day. Um, so we're, they're always looking for 10-minute plays, and they don't have to be specifically about those holidays, the themes are pretty general, so for Fourth of July this year, that's just anything that is remotely related to the idea of independence. Um, we're always looking for plays. The festivals themselves are very fun and laid back for any of you who are in New York. Um, the plays, you know, usually got like a couple of rehearsals. They just, you know, they usually do it on like a Sunday and Monday night or Monday and Tuesday night, but there's an open bar, lots of sangria. Uh, they usually do like a couple plays, you drink, you socialize for half an hour, you do a couple more plays, you drink, you socialize for half an hour, they're really fun. So if any of you are in New York and want to come, or if any of you want have a 10 minute play that you want to see get up, um, it's a really just great fun opportunity to get it up. And the other thing is that they do also do uh, new full length plays. They, like I said, they just do one of mine um, a couple times a year. And I've been really wrestling with them over the last couple years to force them and push them to do more new unknown up and coming playwrights as opposed to well known playwrights. Um, and the better, stronger, full length plays get submitted, the easier it makes it for me to convince them to do new up and coming playwrights. Um, and so just from some of the readings I've seen this week, these are really great strong plays if anybody wants to send those to Nylon. Um, it just makes that much easier to make that argument that we should be doing new playwrights. And I also happen to be one of the people who reads plays there and <laughs> decides what we do. Um, so it's just nylonfusioncollective.org, I believe is the website. Um, and if I'm wrong, just Google Nylon Fusion Collective and it'll come up. Yes, if you want to bribe me when you send the script, I'll take that. I, I just thought of two other things. One is um, that, uh, this is just a little bit off topic, but that survey that we're gonna send out to you guys later, um, we've got a couple, we're gonna have a series of questions on there. We're, we're, right now, as you all know, we're 100% uh, blind submission process. Um, we're in conversations right now about um, uh, how that process is working, if we want to modify it, in terms of uh, women and racial minorities. Um, and and um, so there's gonna be a series of questions on that um, survey and a space to write in thoughts and stuff. We're really interested to hear what you think and feel and what you've discovered in your own lives and, and work um, with regards to that. The second comes back to the resources thing, which is that um, a lot of people uh, do use our Facebook um, page and the connections here to uh, support. There's been numerous, numerous um, uh, people working on other people's productions who have been here, um, hiring designers who have been here, actors working with directors, playwrights directing other people, other play. So, and there's little kind of bases in every city. New York City's probably got the largest base, but LA has got a base. I mean, San Francisco's getting a base. Um, Seattle, we're just getting started with, and um, but um, Minneapolis, but people even we've gotten I've even gotten emails saying um, last year somebody wrote me and said I I just had to move to L.A. I didn't know anybody, so the first thing I did was went out on the Great Plains Facebook and said, Hey, I'm moving to L.A. and got hooked up with an apartment and <laughs> all these groups and stuff. So you can really lean in. There's a you know there's a seven years worth of playwrights that have come before you guys that are, are spread out and have, they all love to connect. And so that's been really, really fruitful. So you can lean on that. The Facebook page is a great way to, to work through that. And then Mark's setting up that, that resource too. I discovered this, um, Micro granting organization called the Awesome Foundation. I don't. Um, I I applied. 
And I didn't get it, so I don't know if... if They're really awesome. Yeah, well, but one of the reasons I wanted to suggest it is that the application yeah. process was really easy, and they seem to respond, just based on looking at the website, to uh, multidisciplinary found spaces, like um, things like that that are um, a little bit off the beat track. And I, I was wondering if maybe my production was a little too traditional, and because they just had some beautiful, really interesting um, creative projects. But they, but it's an easy application process, I think. I don't know if there's a regular granting uh, schedule, but they they have different branches across the country um, that you can kind of focus. If it, if your piece is an Omaha-based piece, then maybe there's an Omaha office that you can direct it, send it directly to. There's a Los Angeles office, which is what I did. But it's a thousand bucks, and it could take you, I think, like a half an hour to fill out the form. So. Awesomefoundation.org.